G'day, welcome to another episode of Country Life on the Coast. My name is Sean and on today's episode, we're gonna build an outdoor workbench. So I've been needing a workbench for a little while now and our shed, which you've probably seen me working in a bit, we store our cars and have so much other bits and pieces in there, I just don't have the space to put a workbench. I thought about building one and putting it on casters to be able to move around, but it still takes up space when you're not using it. So the only option I've got at the moment is just to build one for outdoor use. That adds some complications. I was thinking about it and what I've decided to use is fencing material. And not just that, I'm gonna use old fencing material stuff that was going to basically just go to the dump. So I've picked up an old, some old fencing. Uh, I've been working through just pulling all the nails out of it. It was free. I'm going to try this, see if it works. Um, I don't actually know if it's going to work, but I've got a bit of an idea in my mind how, to, how I want it to look and work. So we'll give it a go and see how it looks. Well, this is my pile of old fencing material. These couple of piles here, I've already been through and removed the nails out of them. So we've got a mix of fence palings, rails, and posts. Some of the stuff is just rubbish and, you know, it's going to go straight in the bin. Unfortunately, there is going to be landfill out of it. Uh, all of this was heading to the dump. So if I can save some and reuse it, that's not a bad thing, certainly for the environment. And it didn't cost me anything apart from some time to go and pick it up in the trailer. Uh, and go through and pull out nails and stuff. So like I said, I've been going through pulling out nails for these bits, the stuff over the back there I still need to work on. But what I'm gonna start with at the moment is get a couple of posts and some of the rails out and sort of work out, fine tune my design. Like I said, I've sort of thought about how I wanna do it. I'm thinking about what measurements to make it, but it will depend on what material I've got. So it's just a case of work through it some of the posts I'll need to still pull some of the nails out because they have some really I don't know, three inch long nails in them that are quite rusty. So we'll get those out and yeah, just sort of do a bit of a stock take on certainly the posts and the rails are the main structure of it. Um, and then the, the top of it, I'm gonna use the fence palings and probably double them up, but it's a bit of a make it up and see how we go sort of thing. But for an outdoor workbench, It'll be fine. So let's get to it. All right, well, I've chosen all my posts and all the rails I'm gonna use. So these ones are part of the, the ends, basically. So I wanna plane these down now. I'm gonna plane three of the sides. This timber's all hardwood, and I don't know what it was treated with, you know, 20, 30 years ago, whenever the fence was first installed. What I wanna do is try and minimize the amount of treatment that's still on them. Being hardwood, it doesn't soak all the way through. I'll plane them up. It will also clean them up a little bit as well. It's an outdoor workbench, so I'm not gonna be using it all the time. We're not gonna be preparing food or anything on it, that's for sure. But you still wanna minimize, obviously, how much you touch outside uh, or, or treated timbers like this. Um, now, I'm not going to also plane the bit where the nails were, because I know some of them I, went, I wasn't able to get the nails all the way out and I'm sure there'll be rusted bits of nails in there um, in some of the holes so I don't want to plane nails that's certainly not good for your planer blade but we'll plane the other three sides the ones that do have the nails we'll just put those on the inside so no one will see any of those anyway um, and yeah see how this comes up with a light plane I just wanted to show the difference between uh, a little bit of planing on this. So we'll see this one's just been planed and this is what they look like before. So beautiful job. I've only got the cheapest, oldest plane around, but it does a okay job. I might need to get some new blades for it soon, but just smooths it up beautifully. I'm 
so happy with how it looks. It's awesome. So I'm going to be doing this for a while, I think. Um, I said just a couple of passes, just to clean it up a little bit. But yeah, very happy with that. So I guess we just keep planning at the moment. Alright, well the next thing I'm going to do is actually make the area, clear out the area where we're going to have the workbench. We've measured out an area here, it's about three metres long and about two and a half metres wide. And the workbench will sit on here. I'm just going to put some pavers down. So we'll rip the turf up using my turf cutter and uh, and then drop some pavers down. If I knew this was going to be a permanent structure, I'd actually concrete it in, but it's only temporary. And so I'm not even going to paver it properly by putting, you know, road base down first and then sand on top and then your pavers. We're just going to let, basically dig the grass out, level it out the best we can and drop the pavers on that. Um, but not ideal, but for a temporary situation, it'll work. Um, and yeah, this way, when the workbench is here, I've got the shade from the shed in the afternoons as well, which is really when most of the time I do the work. But for the time being, let's um, we'll fire up the turf cutter and yeah, rip this up. So we've got all the timber cut to length. We've got all the posts for the legs here, some of the rails there and some on the other side of the, the posts there as well for the shorter rails. Uh, and so what I'm just doing now is I'm gonna check the, the top and the sort of bottom rail part in. So I've marked out here the bit I need to cut out. Let me cut all this bit out and leave this bit. So when the post is standing up, uh, basically there'll be a, a, a rail that comes along here and there, and then this will be the top for the workbench. So I've just adjusted the saw, worked out how to adjust that so it'll uh, got this depth stop on it. Um, we haven't done this before on this saw, brand new, so we're going to give it a go. Um, and hopefully it all works well um, and see how we go. So, as you can see, we've been cutting away here, and um, where I'm up to is we've just cut this top piece off here. And what I'm finding is that because I've had to uh, put the depth stop on it, as it comes along, it doesn't cut full depth all the way through right to the back. So, it does if you go all the way, you know, cut all the way through the timber but it's leaving the line back up here. So what that means is I'm gonna to have to actually use my circular saw to, uh, to cut these pieces out rather than the, uh, the miter saw. So, which is disappointing, but I can't see any other way of uh, making that work. So um, we'll have to pull the circular saw out and finish the rest off that way. This is where we're up to. I've got all my timbers cut out. I've got all my notches done, laid out. So I think I'm pretty well ready to start putting it together. What I'm gonna do is just do a bit of a test fit. Uh, I will put a screw in each one just at the moment to sort of hold it there. But then I wanna pull it all apart and actually paint all of this stuff as well. 
don't know if it needs it, but it'll just help seal it all, make it all the same color as well. And hopefully been sealing it though will actually help it last longer as well, certainly because it's gonna be outside. Now a couple things I didn't talk about earlier, but so I've notched these in so that the rails, the top, and I'm gonna put a shelf underneath here as well. You can just screw them in on top. You know, you don't have to notch them in. You could just attach it straight here. But notching them in like this, a lot stronger joint. So I just thought, well, it's not that difficult to, to notch all these out. It takes a bit more time, but the end result, I think, actually looks a lot better as well. Same as, I've just gone and cut all of these at 45s so that where they meet in here will finish at a corner and again it just makes it look neater I don't think it actually will do anything to the strength of it but it's just a nicer finish and because I've got the new miter saw well I wanted to try a couple of 45 cuts as well so we'll see how all that sort of comes together so we'll see if all this fits we may have to do some more cutting out some of the timbers are all a bit different size being those old fencing timbers so uh, we'll see how we go all right so we've got them fitted just had to do a little bit of planing in a few spots uh, but yeah they all fit in nicely now so now what I'll do is just pre-drill a hole and put a screw in each one just to hold it in place and then I should be able to stand them up and look at putting the sides on I think. Being hardwood, uh, definitely need to pre-drill first otherwise there's a really good chance it'll split so we'll drill these out and put a screw in. Now this one is just to sit in a bit high. I just want to pull it down that way a bit. And the easiest way is if you have a clamp, obviously, you can just clamp it together, pull it down. I don't have a clamp quite that long. This is the longest one I've got. So what you can do, ratchet straps. Just chuck that over there. Now, what it does is it easily brings it in. So now that will hold while I grab my drill, put a hole in there, put a screw in. guys so this is the frame this is the size it's going to be really happy so I haven't got the ends screwed in they're just sitting there at the moment but it's going to fit up really well so I think the next thing I'm going to do is pull it apart and put some paint on it before I go any further so I'll pull these screws out that I've put in and sort of put it back together might just do a bit of a numbering system or something first just so I make sure that everything goes back the same way rather than uh, confuse myself and mix things up somehow um, but yeah it's coming along really well very happy with it it's heavy already so it's not going to go anywhere once we've got it together I don't think all right guys well I've painted all the inside parts of the frame and all the bits that I've notched out uh, as you can see some of it on the outside pieces I haven't actually painted yet part of that was it's been raining the last couple of days I haven't had a chance but also too because I numbered them all uh, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose that, the number what went where. So I'm going to put it all together now and then afterwards I can then paint the outside part and then uh, yeah, continue on from there. Guys, well the frame's all together, nice and sturdy, 
heavy really happy with how that's come out and the corners and everything have actually come together really well too I'm sort of surprised but hey I'm very happy with it so now looking at the bench top and what I'm going to do so like I said previously I'm just going to use fence palings for the top and so I've set a couple here and just seeing how much flex there is I think it'd probably be okay but I've decided to actually put another beam down the center for the shelf and for the top and that way it'll just give a lot more support and that way the fence paling will only be supporting you know that sort of a distance sort of 400 mil uh, and then there'll be very little flex in it as well had thought about doubling these up and overlapping on the joints and doing it that way I'm not convinced that's the better way to go um, I got plenty of timber as well so it's not really an issue so yeah I'll, uh, I'll measure up cut a couple of other beams across and uh, just attach some batten screws either end I think should work nice and easy but adds a lot more strength so when I put those couple of palings on before no flex in that at all so um, yeah I think that'll work well if I ever need to and notice any sagging or anything I can always put another beam across here as well from center post to center post and that'll strengthen that but I really don't think that's going to be required so now I'm just going to go and finish painting all of this before I put the tops on uh, going to be obviously easier to do that now so we'll do that this afternoon and then uh, yeah then we'll get the top on later all right well it's time to start putting the shelf and the top bench on so I've just been cutting the palings on that we're going to use for it so I'm just going to sit them on there first just sort of work it out I'll have to obviously do some cutouts for the posts for the shelf area um, just so they sit on there properly and around it so I'm just going to lay it out first and just yeah see how we go so I think we'll get into that so I've marked this cut out here that's going to go around the center post one either side and so what I'm going to do is just use my circular saw just to rip those off that should work fine and then we can start laying down the shelf guys so we have the shelf now all screwed down so we'll bring some other timbers along for the bench top and we'll start laying those out and uh, screw those down too well here we go guys the bench is totally finished really happy with it the only thing I might still do is put some paint on the top here. I'm still thinking about that. Uh, but overall, it ended up being 2.2 meters long and 900 wide, which is about a bit over seven feet by three feet. So we've got the shelf underneath. I'm not quite sure I'll use that, but it's there if I need to put stuff on it. It's very heavy, very solid, and, and I reckon it's going to last a long time and overall 
wouldn't have cost any more than $30, which is basically all the screws. So everything else came from the fence that, uh, that was pulled down. So overall, really happy with it. Can't beat, you know, the solidness of it and how good. And now I've got somewhere to do projects. The only downside is I'm subject to what the weather is, but can't have everything. But that's all we've got time for in this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time. God bless.